Women claim many and varied examples of how they've been oppressed by men in the workplace, how they've not been allowed to do certain jobs, how they've been kept out of legal and political decision making, how the brilliance of women has been suppressed. There's still huge institutional dis gender discrimination against women, and we have to recognise that. We're not reminded that society much prefers to send men into battle, down mine shafts, up telegraph poles, and into sewers. And I'll certainly not tell you why society is happy to send men into danger whilst protecting women from the same. Women often complain about men not doing housework. Indeed, in Spain, there's a new legal right for women to claim grounds for divorce if the husband doesn't do a share of the housework. Needless to say, there's no equivalent obligation for her to earn a share of the income. Housework? What the hell is it coming down to housework for? You know, I mean, when am I going to turn around? You can turn around your wife and say, well, look, darling, I earn sort of 30,000 a year, so. You've got to work your butt off, and I want you to earn 30,000 a year. And if you don't, I want, to, I want to do something about it. I'm going to do less of this or less of that. You don't, do you? But men don't have this selfish female attitude. They don't want her to do her fair share outside of the home as well as raise children. Everybody loses. It's up to families to decide how they live together, not government. One of my brothers, who's 10 years younger than me, uh, he got married to a young feminist, and God, she was a pain in the bum. She, I mean, he, he was studying to do his accountancy exam, so she and he knew that give it two or three years down the line, he was going to be on the real big money. You're talking 100,000 a year stuff, you know. And, uh, but he'd get home the night, and your turn to change the baby's bottom, your turn to give it, and he had to turn around to her one night and say, Lorraine, if you want me to pass my exams, he said, if you want me to earn an awful lot of money in a few years' time, he says, leave me to do my studies. If you don't want me to be earning all that money, he says, yes, I'll change the baby's bottom, and I'll take it to bed, and I'll feed it, and, and she thought a bit sensibly for a while, I think you're right, Donald, yes, I'll do it. But that's self-interest motivation. Exactly, right? I know. But unfortunately, it took self-interest to bring around, you know? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> A male chauvinist is a man who thinks women are inferior, speaks to them as inferiors, or treats them negatively based solely upon their sex. As with much of what feminists have to say about the opinions and actions of men, accusing men of chauvinism can rarely be justified. You male chauvinist King Kong pig! Oh, I'm a male chauvinist pig! The worst kind! Men have never treated women as inferior. Quite the opposite. Men have treated women, mostly woefully undeserving women, as morally superior. Men have sacrificed themselves for women, and put women first on every occasion. The evacuation will now proceed in an orderly manner. Women and children will be loaded aboard first. The 1842 Mines Act of Parliament prevented women from working on the ground. Men and boys over 10 years old were not protected. Was that chauvinism? Only men were conscripted for the world wars. Was this chauvinism? In the Falklands War, Margaret Thatcher, a woman, sent exclusively men to fight and die. Even royalty doesn't escape risk, as women do the Duke of York, who saw service as a helicopter pilot in the Falklands. Is this male chauvinism? When the Titanic sunk, it was women to the lifeboats first. Was this male chauvinism? Men created labour-saving devices for women before seeing to themselves, before air filters were designed to reduce fatal lung damage from coal dust poisoning in mine shafts. Men were inventing washing machines and vacuum cleaners for women to make their lives easier. Was this male chauvinism? Or perhaps male chauvinism occurred during the 1950s, when men, and only men, had nerve gas tested on them at Porton Down. Chauvinism has never been a part of male behaviour. If it was, it would be women dying on our battlefields, collecting our garbage, and cleaning our sewers. The third ever Nobel Prize went to a woman. In fact, she was awarded two prizes in two different fields. If men were chauvinist, we'd never have heard of Marie Curie. Men will always recognise ability where it's apparent. However, where men doubt the abilities of a superior, whether male or female, they're unlikely to willingly follow them. You do not piss around, am I clear? Well, sir. Can I ask a question, Bill? Yes, Tony. You ever been a station officer before? No. No, I haven't. General, I'm going to need a military liaison with intel background and Russian contacts. You got it. Oh, and General, make sure he's willing to take orders from a woman. The fact is that men respect ability. If a woman has it, no problem. If she doesn't have it, there's a big problem. This female general probably doesn't know what a bullet looks like, and has certainly never faced one. Men have to earn respect from other men, regardless of station. What happened to saluting an officer when he leaves the room? Ten, hot! 
there's an officer on deck. The problem with women is that when they fail to earn respect, they hold up their sex like some kind of shield to disguise their incompetence. My wings are like a shield of steel. That's why women promoted in the armed forces is such a travesty. They haven't proven themselves, they can't do the job, yet men must follow their orders, or else they have a problem with women. Men don't have a problem with women, they have a problem with incompetence. It may get them killed. If they've done it and they've known their stuff and they've, um, they've worked to get there, then, then fine, they command the spirit of the team, but if um, uh, what, what most people don't command the respect of is people that will come straight out of university or whatever, go into the forces on a superior level, knowing academically they might be up for the job, but they've never actually come across any scenarios, um, fought any live fires, had any kind of you know, conflict, um, and yet they'll come in and, and speak to some of the older and bolder guys, you know, who've been in like 20 years, you know, have been there, done that, before they left school. 